Let's do integration together and let's think about how to approach it. Not just the clean polished solution, but also the thought process and attempts. So here we have the integral of three plus five x by one plus x squared dx. And I'm not gonna show you the answer, I'm gonna show you how to think about it. So typically what I like to do in these problems is we sort of think about, okay, one plus x squared is in the denominator. It's very difficult to simplify a denominator, okay? Because if it's in the numerator, you can write out a sum of fractions by adding up the numerators if you have a common denominator. We can't really do that for the denominator. So a good thing is to try is to set u equals one plus x squared. So let's try that. It doesn't have to work, but it's important to gain a thinking process of how these problems are solved. So my first bet is to try u equals one plus x squared. And you're probably telling me, if you see this, you're may, you may be saying, okay, this doesn't work, but let's do it and see what happens. So you're gonna get u is one plus x squared, du is going to be two x dx, okay? So our problem is, we immediately see what our problem is. And this is how we think about math. You know, I'm a research mathematician. So at much higher level problems, I apply the same processes. Here we have the three plus five x. We instead want to have an x, even if we don't have an x. You know, if we have a constant times x, two x, five x, it's all fine because we can then factor out the constant from the integral. You know, here we can write half du is equal to x dx. Unfortunately for us, we have a three plus five x. Okay, so at this point, what do we do? So the typical thing to do when our u substitution fails is to try to simplify our integrand. Try to simplify it in some way to make the u substitution work. And sometimes with problems, you may have to apply multiple tricks. So one, one approach is suppose we didn't have the three, then we could solve the problem, right? So let's, let's try to think about what happens there. If we didn't have the three, we could solve it. So we're going to split up this as a sum of fractions to kind of isolate the part we can't solve and the part we can solve. Now, sometimes it works in integration to split up the sum like this, sometimes it doesn't, okay? So it's a matter of trial and error. But this is an approach, and if it doesn't work, we'll find another one. But here we've got three by one plus x squared plus five x by one plus x squared. And a big part of these integrals is just seeing the pattern or seeing the trick that you, know, you, you keep seeing in problems once you practice, okay? So here, we can sort of try integrating each, to each piece separately. The five x by one plus x squared will work with the u substitution because we can write the x dx as a constant times du. So then the five is a constant, so the whole thing should be possible to simplify with u. We'll get to that. But what about the three by one plus x squared? The u substitution doesn't work at all there. Okay, we just, we get a two x dx if we put u is one plus x squared. And this is where, you know, you either have to see a trick, you know, to simplify the integral, which I've done in other integral problem solving on my channel, so check it out. Or you have to just know the integral, okay? So this is a very fundamental integral that I encourage you to know. I've done a video on my channel and link will appear at the end of the video. I encourage you to check that out. It's a beautiful video about why the derivative of arctan x is one plus x squared, okay? So I really demystify this, which may not be very obvious. Why should the derivative of a trig function, like arctan, a weird trig function, why should it be one over one plus x squared? I don't know, but I explained it in that video. Well, I know, but I explained it very intuitively in that video. So what we know is we know this, in, this integral, one over one plus x squared dx is arctan x plus a constant. Okay, this is the one you have to know. This is one of those integrals you have to know. And that's just, that's just how it is. You have to know this. Um, and once you know this, you can then solve a lot of problems. Okay, so this is a key one. Okay, it's a key one to know. And there are many other problems you can solve with this one, which I will get to in other videos. But now that we have that, let's try to sort of simplify this problem. Let's solve it. So let's solve the problem. We're going to get three times the integral of one over one plus x squared dx plus five times the integral of x over one plus x squared dx. And now the key trick is that, remember what I said at the beginning, if u equals one plus x squared, then one half du is going to equal to x dx because du is two x dx. Okay, so our x dx here becomes one half du. So you can write this as three arctan x plus one half du is x dx. So five over two comes, okay, one half comes out. So you get five over two. So plus five over two times the integral of du over u. And of course the du over u is going to be, it's a famous integral, it's log, okay? That's another one to know. That's much more important even than the arctan one. So we get log absolute value u plus a constant, okay? So we get three arctan x plus five over two 
times log of the absolute value u plus a constant, but u was 1 plus x squared. And we can even do away with the absolute value because 1 plus x squared is always positive because perfect squares are always at least zero. So it would be log u, log absolute value u, can just be log u, and u is 1 plus x squared. So it's going to be log 1 plus x squared plus a constant. So that's our integral. It's the sum of an arctan and a log. Pretty crazy for an integral that is just a nice function. You know, I don't necessarily, as, even as a mathematician, I don't necessarily like arctan and log. They're weird functions. I mean, log is more important than arctan, but they're weird functions, but this is a nice function. We got the integral. Shows you the trick, okay? Don't worry if something fails the first time. U substitution doesn't work. That's fine. We learn from seeing what is the gap between what we try and what our solution is. That's always true in all levels of problem solving. If you can make some progress or see a similar problem, you know, like if we delete the three, we could have solved it. That's something that many people, if they saw this problem, they would then think, okay, but the three is there. And then they would sort of give up on it. Or they would sort of think that, you know, now we can't do anything. And they would think that their approach is completely wrong. But actually that is a key insight in the solution. So think about those kinds of things. Sometimes in math problems, think about what happens if something wasn't there or is there, that helps a lot. So just some tips from a, from a mathematician, I'm a professional mathematician, just giving you some tips of thinking. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and share with students, friends, classmates. You know, I've got lots of problem solving and integration problem solving as well on my channel, all levels of math. So as you go through your math journey, there'll be videos for you, all topics. So if that sounds appealing to you, please subscribe, like my video, and I'm super excited to see you in the next one. Wish you all the best and I'll see you soon.